My name is Liam Fenton. Um, today we're going to talk to you about CAR plus strong synthesis. So CAR plus strong synthesis um, was a form of synthesis uh, developed in 1983 um, by Kevin CAR plus and Alex Alexander Strong. And basically they developed a digital, a digital form of synthesis that was designed to reproduce the sound of an acoustic stringed instrument. Um, so to or in order to understand what they were trying to e recreate, we need to understand the identifying characteristics of a, a string and why it sounds the way it does. Um, so first we'll talk very briefly about um, string mechanics for a little bit, and then we'll talk to you about car plus strong and how they recreated this sound. So when we talk about stringed instruments, we're talking about a fixed, fixed string, which has two nodes that cannot displace um, away from the equilibrium. So the material between those two nodes is free to vibrate back and forth between these two fixed points. Um, so basically when we have a string and it vibrates, it's going to vibrate at a certain frequency, which is dependent on its mass, length, and tension. So this is why on an instrument like a guitar, we have all these different thicknesses of strings so that they can be the same tension but produce a different note. Um, and the other reason for developing things like guitars and uh, other stringed instruments is because when you use one of these fixed, fixed strings in open space, it doesn't give off a, a very loud wavefront because it's not um, enough mass to move very much air. Um, but basically, when we take one of these strings, we attach it to an instrument like a guitar or a mandolin. Um, the vibration from that string is transferred through the entire, um, through all the materials used in that instrument, um, which gives a much larger resonating surface and therefore moves more air, producing a larger uh, wave. Um, the other thing we hear when we hear a stringed instrument is a natural comb filtering effect, which basically um, comes from the higher partials, um, which are um, harmonically related, they're integer multiples of the fundamental frequency, and those partials gradually uh, dissipate, and we're left with just the, fu the fundamental frequency resonating. Um, so these are basically the things Car Plus Strong needed to recreate. They needed to recreate um, pitch, um, sorry, they needed to recreate pitch, uh, th this harmonic spectrum, the comb filtering effect, um, and that's what they were trying to do. So basically, uh, here we have um, a spectrogram of just a guitar pluck that kind of shows you the natural comb filtering effect, the way the harmonic partials um, naturally get cancelled out. And we can play that sound. Um, yeah, so then it's just, an, yeah. Um, so basically, now we're going to look a bit about how Carpless and Strong went about figuring out how to recreate this, so this sound. Um, Basically, what their algorithm used was a very short transient, usually a burst of, they preferred to use white noise because it's the richest um, spectral content, basically has the most high frequency energy. So you can get the most variety of timbres out of something like that. Um, so this short burst of noise, usually below 10 milliseconds, is run through a delay unit. And basically, by, by adjusting the rate of the delay and the, the gain of the delay unit, we can adjust the pitch and uh, resonance, respectively. So by increasing the rate at which the delay is triggering, we're incre increasing the pitch. By um, increasing the gain, we're increasing how long this ring actually resonates for. And this is all about, basically, this is where self-oscillation comes from. And the idea that if we brought the gain all the way up to 100%, we would have a constantly repeating level that wouldn't increase or decrease. If we went above 100%, it would grow louder. So keeping it below 100% ensures that we have the natural, um, the natural fade that a string has, obviously. Rather than getting louder, it gets quieter. Um, so that's what we, this little diagram shows. And basically, they added a one-pole low-pass filter, which acts to, uh, to recreate the comb filtering effect. Um, so we built a little patch in Maxim MSP to demonstrate how this works in practicality. So we'll bring that up for you really now. So here is our Car Plus Strong patch. I'll give you a short overview of how the patch is laid out and how it works, and then we'll get to some audio examples. So here we have our short burst of noise, which excites our delay unit. So our delay unit has a maximum delay time of 50 milliseconds and a minimum of zero. So in the delay unit, we also have a low pass filter, which um, has a maximum uh, frequency cutoff of uh, 15,000 Hertz. Um, so we can come down from there, which basically uh, changes the brightness of the sound, the timbre, um, by cutting off higher partials. And then we have our feedback gain, which is basically the gain of the delay unit. So right now we have our max at 0.99, because if we were to put it all the way up to 1, we would get self-oscillation, and um, beyond would be exponential gain. So the signal would get louder rather than decrease, and what we want, obviously, to recreate a string sound is to have that natural um, decrease in amplitude over time. So now we'll get to some examples. 
So we'll start with a white noise burst. Um, our delay time is the quickest it can be, so zero milliseconds. Our filter cutoff is as high as it can go, so 15,000 hertz. We have all the partials up to 15,000 hertz. Um, and our feedback gain is also all the way up. This basically just gives us a high-pitched guitar-like string sound. Now if we change the delay time, we're actually changing the pitch of the tone. So if we turn the delay time all the way up to 50 milliseconds, you can hear the gradual decrease in frequency until it gets to the point where it sounds like a loose guitar string. If we put that back up to get another, to get a nice string sound again, we can demonstrate the filter cutoff, which basically changes the brightness of the sound. So this is kind of what can change the sound from a more piano-like sound to something, to a really bright stringed instrument like a mandolin. And finally, if we change the feedback gain, we're basically changing how long the note actually sustains for, so how long does it resonate for. Just to demonstrate a bit of the versatility of uh, this algorithm, we included some other noise sources other than white noise. So as we know, white noise um, has equal energy across frequencies, so this means it basically has the most high frequency energy out of, out of, um, out of all noises. But if we switch to something like pink noise, which is equal frequency across octaves, it basically means we have less high frequency content in that sound. So when we hear this, it's a bit more of a, a dulled, dampened sound with, um, with less, it's generally less bright. We also included a random voltage generator, which also gives us um, a kind of interesting timbre. And we also included a frequency modulation um, kind of noise source, where we can adjust the carrier frequency, the harmonicity ratio, and the modulation index. And this um, can allow for some really interesting glassy and metallic timbres um, by changing the harmonicity ratio.